Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. All right, so we have some new information on the Michael Irvin situation. Um, we found out that Michael Irvin's attorneys filed in Mariopa County in Arizona, um, the local court, which is where the defendants reside, okay, um, the new filing. And there's some interesting things in here, and there are new people named in the lawsuit. But what's interesting is in this lawsuit, you have Michael Irvin basically giving a pass to the NFL and shielding the shield. And that is mainly because Michael Irvin wants to get back on TV. I think, you know, if it were a case of he got nothing as far as money and could go back on TV, he'd go back on TV. I just think that that's the way the case would be. It's the ultimate thing that he wants is he wants to have his life back. In the meantime, he wants to definitely put pressure on Marriott. So here's what we have here. Um, Defendants-wise that have been named in here now, it's um, Marriott International, which is uh, based in Delaware. Um, that's where the parent company is. And the Renaissance Hotel Operation, which is kind of like a division with inside of Marriott. So both of those are named. Now, here's where it gets to be interesting. Because we have a Daklin Waziri, okay? Um, we believe Daklin Waziri is the director of the restaurants, okay? So he is the manager who was there watching this whole situation go down. And this guy is crucial to everything in here. Also, Tracy Schultz, who is the hotel manager, um, and Leanne. Vicent, 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 I can't pronounce her name. You know, I'm a name butcher, but she's the director of sales. Okay, so that's the first thing because we're going through the affidavits here uh, on the case. Um, and of course, there is Jane Doe, who is the person who was allegedly harassed. Okay, so these are the filings by Michael Irvin's attorneys to the court to make their case. Now, the interesting thing is they've dropped the $100 million. They've dropped the $100 million. They basically have left it open so that way the court system can deem how much damages could be. The damages could be deemed a whole lot more. They could say, you know what, you've lost your career and your career could be worth X amount of dollars or something. And then, of course, there's the pain and suffering and the harassment, this, that, and the other. So it could be that this money grows. But like I said, he ends up basically giving a pass to the NFL. So his complaint is there were no criminal complaints have been made to the Phoenix Police Department or any other law enforcement agencies concerning the interaction between Michael Irvin and Jane Doe. Okay. So the first thing is they're saying if something happened, how come they didn't call the police? Okay. That's the first thing. The next night while resting in his hotel room, Mr. Irvin was awakened by security crew who removed him from the room and escorted him out of the hotel without any explanation as to why he was being removed from the hotel. Okay. Again, this is what, his attorney is saying. The next thing is Miss Doe complained about Mr. Irving's behavior towards her to the management of the hotel, including the Renaissance and Marriott representatives and the NFL. Specifically, upon information and disbelief, Miss Doe falsely reported that Michael Irvin had made lewd comments to her unwanted physical advances upon her and that she has been threatened and harassed by Michael Irvin. Um you know, you can have everybody in the sister watch that tape. I'm not sure that you can see harassment there where she feared for her life. And that's just my own personal take. I've, I've had people, you know, say, you know, he's a predator and he's this. Uh, no, come on. Are you honestly telling me you saw that in that tape? I, I didn't see it. But be, 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 let's go into this a little more. Miss Doe first made reports uh, with actual malice and knowledge as to the falsity of uh, uh, false, false, I can't pronounce the word, falseness of her statements. Further, there was no reasonable justification for her 
for her false reports. Reports. They were made specifically for the purpose of damaging Mr. Irving's image, standing a reputation in the community. Okay, now here's where it gets to be interesting because, I mean, and I'm going to give you a possible possibility. Mr. Waziri reported the false information to the NFL accusing Mr. Irving of harassing and abusing a female hotel employee. Renaissance and Marriott falsely told the NFL that Mr. Irvin had been captured on video surveillance harassing Miss Doe and that he um, posed a potential safety risk to uh, Miss Doe and other employees of the hotel. Okay, so here's where it gets to be interesting because we thought that the NFL saw the tape. They're basically saying that the NFL did not see the tapes the surveillance tape, they only heard what the allegations from Marriott were. And what they are claiming basically is because Marriott is a corporate sponsor, okay, and partner, that instead of going through and actually investigating it, they just took the word of their partner. They're basically saying, well, Michael Irvin did this, this, and this. And the NFL basically said, okay, if you say so, then we're going to pull them off air. But they did not see the tapes, or at least the attorneys are claiming they did not see the tapes. Okay, so let me go into this a little deeper. The hotel is one of several Renaissance hotels within the Marriott portfolio. Marriott is a longtime sponsor of the NFL. Upon information and belief, Marriott chose the relationship with the NFL. Um, the NFL, which basically they use this relationship to react swiftly in response to the serious allegations and complaints received from Michael uh, from Marriott. Um, so basically, they're saying, "Hey, you know, we're in business here together. You know, he did this, this. Okay, hey, hey, okay, cool. Well, you guys are paying us, you know, be a sponsor. So okay, we'll keep you happy. Um, so they're basically telling you." that the NFL relied on Marriott's word and didn't actually do an investigation of themselves. So here's the problem, or here's where you wonder, because it was the hotel manager, excuse me, the director of restaurants, the guy we see there with his hands at his side and, who is definitely paying attention to his employee. He was clapping at her before this whole thing kept going. So you don't know. And and this is, again, I don't know. I've gotten a lot of people who are angry and I've got some people who said that they've defended me before and that they now think that maybe I'm just wrong or whatever. Okay. I, I hear you. I've gotten emails from people that are basically saying that, you know, he is the, the scum of the earth and so on. But I will say something here because I I recognize Michael Irvin had the hotel incident back in the day. We all know about that. He pleaded no contest, right? There's been a couple other cases that were allegations that police investigated. No charges were ever filed in anything and so on. And, of course, there was a scissor gate. But here, let me give you an example of something. In 1997, I declared bankruptcy because I had a flesh-eating bacteria in my knee. I didn't have health insurance. And in order to save my life, I had three operations in the course of a week on my knee. I spent two weeks in the hospital, and I was on IV antibiotics for six months. I ended up being divorced from my ex-wife. I had my five-year-old son and my three-year-old daughter that I was raising as a single parent. In the meantime, while I was spending the six months learning how to walk again, I lost my job. And I declared bankruptcy in 1997. So with me having cleared bankruptcy in 1997, that's a transgression. That's me not paying my bills. Does that mean for the rest of my life that I can never get any credit again because of one incident that happened all those years ago? 
Are we condemned? Am I condemned for the rest of my life for that one incident that I did back there? Because what I learned about bankruptcy is it's not about what you did to get in bankruptcy. It's about what you do after you get out of bankruptcy. That's what the creditors look at. If you get out of bankruptcy in two years, you don't make any mistakes, then you can start getting credit again. It'll be high, but you can start to rebuild it. So I look at this and I say, those who are condemning him for actions that he had, those actions happened long ago. And looking at this tape solely, if it wasn't Michael Irvin and you just looked at somebody different on this tape, would you still think the same thing about Michael Irvin as somebody else that's there? Probably not. Um, I think... Um, the last part in here, um, let me get to it. Hold up. The final part in here too. Here's where they're also claiming that basically he's been accused of something and it has affected his job, but Marriott hasn't been forthcoming, wasn't forthcoming to them to allow them to speak to witnesses or have any information. The witnesses have also uh, volunteered to provide eyewitness accounts of the incidents issued to Marriott and Renaissance um, representative charged with interrogating and reporting the incident. But basically they said, no, thanks. We don't want to talk to any of them. Mr. Irving's representatives contacted Marriott and the Renaissance to determine what was going on to offer witnesses of the incident for questioning and to resolve the matter for Mr. Irving's reputation and further the damage, but to no avail. Mr. Irving's representatives met with Ms. Schultz and Mrs. Uh, Vincia, Vinci Garada uh, for the purpose of settle, setting up an interview or meeting among Mr. Irving's between Marriott, the Renaissance, in addition, providing the names of multiple eyewitnesses who observed the complete interaction between Mr. Irvin and Jane Doe and desire to share their accounts of what happened. Um, in reckless disregard of the truth of a devastating report, the accusations made by their colleagues about Mr. Irvin refused to contact or gather information offered by the first-hand eyewitnesses. Upon this information and belief, Ms. Schultz and Vince Aguerrera, uh, despite having readily accessed the information refuting the truth and validity of the report against Mr. Irvin, continued to share false reports condemning Michael Irvin to the NFL. So the case is basically saying, okay, you guys are solely basing all this off of the manager who was there, who clearly looked perturbed, Jane Doe, who may have been put on blast because maybe something else had happened before, and they're passing the buck, and the hotel itself for not actually investigating it, not investigating it, carelessly not talking to anybody other than hotel employees, and then turning around and sharing that solely to the NFL. So that way, the, the only side of this story is Marriott's as opposed to actually talking to others. So this is interesting. And the final piece, of course, is Michael Irving has dropped the $100 million uh, ask. And basically, the court can determine how much um, it can be. Now, Marriott was served on the 14th of March. And basically, they have until April 3rd to either file a motion to uh, dismiss or actually answer the charges. And then, of course, from that point, uh, the two sides have like 30 days to get together to figure out when to try and take this to court and or um, settle it out of court. So that's where we are here with this. This is big news on the case. Um, we'll keep watching. So the next big day. April 3rd, by then, we'll hear something else. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you guys watching, following, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report as we try and go through this whole mess.